Welcome back Guardians. The Spire of the Watcher dungeon just released and with it a bunch of new lore and of course new questions. What's the deal with the Seraph Tower? What are the Soul Divisive, the Black Garden Vex doing on Mars? And how does it all connect to the hidden city of Neomuna? Well, you're in luck. We're going to answer all of these questions right now. This video will be split into two parts. The first will cover the events of the dungeon itself, what the Vex are up to and how we put a stop to it. The second will cover the backstory of the Seraph Tower and how a rogue AI set the stage for Neomuna. Let's begin. We start off the dungeon with Osiris telling us that a Seraph Tower on Mars has recently reactivated, a place Anna Bray calls a Pillory Bunker. This is actually a phrase we've heard before. Back in the prelude to Season of the Worthy, Anna was scouring the system for Bray Tech sites to empower Rasputin when she came across one of these bunkers. After some investigation, she learned that the purpose of the Pillory Network was to dismantle Rasputin if he ever went rogue, holding pieces of his mind in 12 stations spread across the system. Have a listen to the web lore entry Legacy. It reads, Anna stares into the console's interface. What are you? Not Atlas, Jinju's dejection reverberates in the glass cell. Anna flicks a sideward glance over her shoulder at her ghost before selecting Warmind Network Bypass. No, but it looks like this system has backdoors all over. She toggles through the list of shadow networks, production facilities, and connected pillory stations. It's not Atlas, but it's a start. There are 11 other stations like this. There's a whole subnet defense network completely disconnected from the Warmind initiative. Anna steps back. Why? Jinju circles the screen. Why is right? Anna dives back into the terminal. The facilities listed span the system. Earth and Luna, Europa, asteroids adrift, now belonging to the shore. Mars, naturally. Even so far as Uranus. That station and orbital caught her eye. Echo. She flicks back to the previous menu. Echo Link. One of these stations has a pending request. Thin tap tones of pale tin reek metallic inside Anna's helmet, frenetic and uneven. Pillory does sound bad. A few swift motions navigate the trio into the Pillory access menu. Never heard to read the instructions. Anna selects the procedural outline. Her gaze chisels into the loading screen. In the event of a red line protocol incident, Paragon level members, Pillory system network, Clovis 1 to 12, access point, Clovis 9. In the event of catastrophic failure, neural degeneration, or loss of containment, herein collectively referred to as a rogue mind incident, initiate war mind cerebral partitioning and quarantine integration into 12 Clovis stations within a neural web way. Right, so the pillory station that we visit as part of the dungeon was actually designed to contain and segment Rasputin if he ever went rogue. We assume that if this tech could imprison parts of Rasputin's mind, then of course it could trap a sub-mind. I have a completely separate video on sub-minds, however, I do think the topic is still a little bit convoluted. My interpretation of sub-minds is that a sub-mind are copies of specific segments of Rasputin, so they exist separately from Rasputin, however collectively they could replicate and repair Rasputin which is the exact plotline this season, to collect the submines and restore Rasputin. So this pillory station has the technology to trap AI, either a direct partition of Rasputin in the case of him going rogue, or in this case, a submind. And that is what the Vex are trying to do with the Seraph Tower in the dungeon. They're trying to use it to trap a submind. Interestingly, the Vex we face in the dungeon are the Soul Divisive, a unique faction of Vex that are seldom seen outside of the Black Garden. During the in-game dialogue for the dungeon, Osiris also confirms that they directly serve the Witness, something we previously weren't certain of. So our task appears simple, climb the Seraph Tower and stop the Soul Devices from stealing Rasputin's submines for the Witness. However, as we progress through the dungeon, Osiris realizes that the Vex have a second agenda, the scouring the site's database for information. The Witness is looking for something. Have a listen to this Osiris Dungeon dialogue from when you first enter the bunker. The Ishtar Collective in a Seraph complex. Peculiar. They were rivals in the Golden Age. This wasn't just a pillory site, it was a joint research facility focused on extrasolar colonization efforts. The Soul Divisive 
have been scouring research logs. They were looking for something more than to imprison Rasputin submines. We'll talk about what exactly the witness was after later, but for now, let's continue with the dungeon. We climb to the top of the spire and deal with the Vex mind attempting to trap the suburb mines. However, Osiris realizes the Vex are attempting to overload the facility's reactor and destroy it. Basically, if they can't have it, no one can. So we race back down the tower and stop the Vex mind messing with the reactor, at which point our job is done and Osiris gives us a pat on the back, confident that our expedition will give credence to his vision of the city on Neptune. Have a listen to Osiris' dialogue as you descend down the spire. Guardian, what we've seen here proves my visions have merit. We must secure the complex to convince Ikora. The trust is a frail thing. As much as our mission, if this can restore her faith in me, I need this. But how does this Seraph Tower, which by the way is called the Airy Spire, tie into Osiris' vision of Neptune? Well, reading through the lore tabs of the gear acquired in the dungeon, we can piece together exactly how a secret human colony arose on Neptune. As we heard Osiris mention earlier, the Airy Spire is not just a pillory bunker. He referred to it as a joint research facility. We would discover that this joint venture was between Clovis Bray and the Ishtar Collective. There's a whole bunch of lore about the Ishtar Collective if you want to go digging, but the cliff notes are that Ishtar was a collective of genius golden age scientists that came together to study the Vex. This joint venture was called the Echo Project, and its focus was extrasolar colonization, similar to the Exodus program in the Cosmodrome. However, one of the key factors distinguishing the Echo Project was its use of a unique AI named Soteria, the Augur Mind. So Terrier was built by an Ishtar scientist named Maya Sundaresh using Vex technology, with the intent of using the AI to simulate colonization efforts with incredible accuracy, predicting what would succeed and what would fail. Have a listen to Anna Bray's discovery of this in the TMEARP Custom Vest Law Tab. It reads, Anna skims the readout and eyes the warnings of a foreign entity. There's still a sole device of signature in the network. It's weak and disconnected, but it's active. Her fingers enter a flurry of commands. It's grouping dozens of file references for something called the Augur Mind. The Augur Mind looks like a predictive engine directing expansion of extrasolar colonies. Maya Sundaresh made a clairvoyant AI using Vex tech, and the sole device of want it or want something from it. However, in her attempts to plot safe courses and destinations for colony ships, Soteria discovered that almost the entirety of the nearby universe was unsafe for humanity. It was unable to determine the exact nature of this danger, which we can assume was either the Hive or the Witness and its disciples, but quickly realized that it didn't bode well for humanity. Have a listen to Soteria's talk with Maya Sundaresh in the Terminus Horizon Lore Tap. It reads, Andromeda Galaxy Several million habitable worlds, 2.5 million light years. Estimated echo travel time, 25,000 year average with a trino sail and gravitational sling skipping. I have selected over 300 preliminary colony targets with one favorite. Shall I? Hmm, so Terrier. Anomaly detected. Chronoscopic variance scanning. Viability refractoring. Analyzing potential mission threat. Redetermined Andromeda world viability. New target number, 27 viable worlds. Can you define the anomaly? Negative. I cannot rectify this data with known quantities. It may be computational error. Shall I perform a self-diagnostic? No. First, adjust probability fork and search distance to open. What is the farthest safe galactic route you can determine? Engaging query, chronoscopic lock, forking branches, reigning distance, reigning chronology, unbroken trajectory, lock determined, route established. One select point in Triangulum Galaxy retains safe approach vectors. All other simulated potential targets are perilous due to indeterminable anomalous risk. Travel route hazards range 87 to 100% mortality rate across expeditions in all predictive branches. All the simulant expeditions? Yes. I hold query refined. There are now two safe destinations within Triangulum. Is that a correction or a change in data? A change, an update in real time. Real time, this anomaly is mobile? Unclear, I require further information and analysis. Thank you, Soteria. We're ending this test early, but you did well. We'll continue the next test on schedule. 
After this discovery, Sotero contacted Rasputin to let him know what she had found. The war mind agreed that whatever the anomaly was, it represented a direct threat to humanity. He suggested Sotero initiate colonization efforts as soon as possible while he readied the soul system for war. As a side note, this means Rasputin knew of and was preparing for the arrival of the Black Fleet much earlier than we previously thought. So Terra then attempted to initiate the Echo Project, launching colony ships under the guise of a test run. Why she tried to hide the truth is unclear, although it's implied she didn't believe Clovis Bray would allow the ships to launch if she was forthright with him. However, Clovis notices the test launch anyway and orders Terra to return the ships. She refuses, and after a short back and forth, Clovis activates the Airy Spire and traps Soteria using the pillory system. Have a listen to the Log Arm Scout Rifle Lord Tab. It reads, It's malfunctioning. Damn it, Sundaresh. She let your degeneration play out far too long. Soteria, direct executive command. Power down all engines and plot nearest return routes. Order received. Plotting Caranthan site's return approaches. Executing Watchtower AI reintegration. Command denied. Override protocol. Twilight. Activated. Command structure recomposing. Route designated. Strongholds. Any destination. Remaining extra solar safe site. M31. Your interactions with the war mine have made you too bold. Such a disappointment. Countermeasures and divestment protocols will deploy automatically upon a code incursion. Please, Dr. Bray. You're throwing away every exo aboard that ship. Hesitation means extinction. Oh, have it your way. Just know I gave you every chance to prevent this. As did Execute Pillory Protocol Administrative Command Override. Soteria Countermeasure Submind Divest Activate. Pillory Link Soteria Secure. Partitioning. So with Soteria locked away, the majority of the colony ships immediately returned home. However, one ship in particular did not. Some of you might have noticed that at the end of the previous lot entry, Soteria created a Submind. Yeah, so now this is a sub-mind of an AI. While this sub-mind wasn't nearly as powerful as one of Rasputin's sub-minds, it was able to upload itself to one of the ships and keep it on an extra solid trajectory. Unfortunately, that was about all it was able to do, and the ship eventually crash-landed on Neptune. Have a listen to the Into the Sunset Sparrow Law tab. It reads, She feels the Echo Fleet slip from her control, called back to harbour. It is a death sentence. She will fracture a piece of herself, She'll become less for survival. She does not know if she can expel a sub-mind. She does not know any other option. With it, she may hold to a hope, even one. The fragment grips tight to a single echo craft, burrowing into its code and assuming direct control as Soteria is ripped away from it. Then there is only the fragment, born from Soteria, separated, wandering, able to resist the spire only enough to continue onward. A fragment, unstable, lost, adrift, without guidance. It does not know where to go, and so it continues ever onward on the wake of its birthing impulse. So there you have it, the origin story of Nia Muna. This explains how nobody knew of its existence, even the AI that launched the ship didn't know where it would end up. And this brings us to what the witness was looking for in the Airy Spire database. I believe the hidden plot of this season is discovering the location of Nia Muna. Both the Guardians and the witness are racing each other to discover its location. Its location is hidden within the sub mines and the golden age AI that we are uncovering. And with that, that concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. If you'd like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, you can leave the word to Soteria, which represents the origin story of Neo Muna. As usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.